I'm 95 years old. So with that span of time, you can just imagine that I remember President Aguinaldo <laughs> all the way to President Duterte. <laughs> and that's my advantage over most people in this land today, because I have seen history from the time of the Americans all the way to now. History uh, was totally distorted to favor one group. And it's, it, it is unfortunately continuing. That is why exercises yeah. such as these are and, important. Uh, little by little, the truth will come out. Well, I, I, I'm I, glad that uh, you have asked me to join this uh, conversation so that uh, at least we can somehow correct the distortions of history. I am very grateful to you. And I'm willing to challenge to... anybody uh, here in this country to debate with me about the events. We put this together, really, because of the, the mail that I have been receiving in my uh, social media. And the millennials have a different approach, it seems, to the events of, of history. Uh, the history of your lifetime, for that matter. And uh, the millennials seem to want to know what it is behind the decisions that my father and the members of his government made in, his time, in the time of the Marcos administrations. And so we thought the best, uh, most authoritative person that we could find would be you. Mm. As you were not only in the middle of the action, as it were, but uh, you were part of the decision-making process of many of the important events that, uh, that occurred. During the first two years, three years of martial law, you can open your window, leave your house, nobody will touch it. Mm. That's how peaceful the country was. So it, it, is, it, wasn't the typical, it wasn't the typical country under military rule where you had tanks in no, the streets no, 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 and no, you no. had soldiers people were pulling free. people out of their homes. Of course, homes. in the beginning we had curfew. Yes, we had, yes, I remember that. We had to give grant passes. Mm. So Tito, the, the account you're giving as to the, the approach, the build-up towards the declaration of martial law and the actual implementation of it and the enforcement of uh, the uh, military rule, uh, it's very different from what we are hearing. And for, for you, you know, for example, I mean, I, I hear it too, but of course it's a different, you come from a different perspective. What is the biggest fallacy that the young people now are being fed about the, about the, uh, the well, reasons behind and the actual events of martial law? They claim that we killed a lot of people. And that's why when I was interviewed by someone uh, some time ago, I challenged her. Name me one that we executed, what we killed, other than Lim Seng. What was the accusation? Was that uh, they were summarily that, uh, that executed? That we had seventy thousand oh, persons I hear those arrested, to which was not, which, which was not true. Hmm. Maybe if they will include the car, the people who were who violated curfew, <laughs> and the jaywalkers. Maybe you can. <laughs> Reach that number. <laughs> but say anyone who was people, people can go out at night, they can go out and fish, they can go out to farm, they can go out. They were free, in fact. Hmm. Of course, if you are a, a member of the rebel, rebel group or a, a warlord or a, 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 a who violated a, crimi a criminal uh, a law, hmm. you have to be arrested whether you have martial law or not. It, it, it sometimes, uh, I, I'm mystified sometimes by uh, the, the lack of understanding of the simple fact that if you attack the government, you attack the state, the state needs to defend itself. Of course. And that, uh, that, 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 that's why fighting would break uh, out. And that's name, why me, name me one person that was arrested because of political or religious belief during that period. None. They were all Maybe for criminal acts. Maybe one person that uh, was arrested simply because he criticized President Marcos. None. But there were a lot of critics still uh, very, very vociferous and very uh, speaking out against, uh, against him and his administration, yes. even during the martial law, during under, uh, when the country was under martial law. Jovi Salonga, for instance. Oh, 
He was involved in the light of fire movement and many others. They were very few were arrested. And they were released. They were inconvenient, uh, inconvenienced for a while, but they were released. The late Pepe Jokno, he didn't want to be released. Uh, just, I told Pepe, <laughs> just sign anything and uh, just, just get out of here. <laughs> I told him. <laughs> All of that seems to have been lost uh, in the accounts that we hear now. Well, I cannot blame the so-called millennial when were, they were born in 1980, no? Let's say, oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Well, Let's they say did not there. know anything. They just, what they, they know is what they read or heard. And, it is uh, and uh, they read something that was based on inaccurate facts. During martial law, there were no massacres like what happened in Benjola during the supposed uh, democratic government of Jorge Aquino. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could explain to these young people uh, hmm. the approach that, uh, that you took uh, to governance. Because, Tito, I remember when I was young, I would listen to, to my father's speeches and lagi kong naririnig the phrase nation building. And I have not heard that phrase since 1986. And it does not seem to be the priority or the, the, the guiding principle in governance anymore. You mentioned about nation building which was a battle cry of the Marcos uh, government. That's right, Tito. That was all included in the uh, national plan that was prepared mm -hmm. by the brain trust of uh, your, uh, your dad. And that covers infrastructure, agriculture, uh, uh, energy, and education. And that's why when we started with agriculture, he established irrigation canals. Mm -hmm especially in the north and in many parts of the country. And then he went into electrification. The national electrification that we have started with your father. He started the geothermal, geothermal. sources of energy in the country today, which is uh, helping the economy. Mm -hmm. And then later on, as a part of his uh, national plan, education of the people. And that's why he created the system of state universities that expanded the educational system in the country and made education cheaper for the people. And so many others. He introduced land reform. Mm. That's why he, he was very conscious of uh, the sale of Hacienda Luisita <laughs> uh, during the Garcia administration. Garcia. This was a part of his land reform program. Proposed the establishment of a nuclear plant, mm. which was derailed by Cory Aquino because of their anger and revenge against the Marcos administration. Dito, you mentioned the uh, lobbying of the uh, big landowners, the Hacienda owners, and uh, uh, for the exemptions from the land reform. But the, that, I think the term that, uh, in that around that time was we were beginning to hear my father speaking out against the group of oligarchs. Correct. That were controlling many segments of the economy Correct. and were not uh, in, uh, uh, were not uh, helping or supporting the national program. Oligarchies existed during the time of your dad, and even before that, mm -hmm. and even now they are still around. They control the economy, they control the agriculture because they had all the haciendas. They control the communication. They want to control even government. If you will remember, you have to talk to interest groups to be able to run for public office in those days. Control Meralco, they control the media, they control the, uh, the newspapers uh, and uh, the radio, yeah, oh, many, many facets of in the industry. They, the industrialization of the country was controlled by the so-called oligarchs of the of the land. So, so the, this is one of the elements that uh, that that uh, pushed the government towards the declaration of martial law yes. in '72. Uh, uh, apart from the fact that uh, indeed there was a need of it, because 
what was the social condition of the land at this point. We were dealing with separatism in Mindanao. We were dealing with a very strong communist party. We were dealing with the onset of drugs, menace in the, menace in the country. We were dealing with landlord, this, uh, political warlords over the land and the, the high criminality in the land. And what was our instrument of power at that uh, point? We had only less than 50,000 in the armed services. That included the constabulary, the army, the air force, the navy, and the coast guard. And uh, our weapons were carbines oh. and uh, garants of uh, World War World II War vintage. II. World War II vintage. Against the Belgian Falls, the Kalashnikov or KK-47 of uh, our uh, adversaries. I think nakakalimutan dito the, the extent of this warlordism and the, the size of the private armies. The, the size of uh, firearms in the hands of the civilian population was much more than the uh, capability of the armed forces of the Philippines and the, uh, the constabulary. When martial law was declared, the, there was an we harvested yeah. about 600,000 guns all over the country of all kinds. As, a, as opposed to our 50,000... Uh, Less than 50,000 to be exact. I think we had only about 48,000. Uniformed services. Yeah. So the, 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 the people do not realize the extent of the warlordism because I don't and think we have the apart, modern equivalent. Apart from, the, from these uh, factors that I told you, their political organization, especially the pol uh, political organization of the uh, Communist Party of the Philippines, was uh, extensive. They have a united front that was very strong until now. That uh, united front is operating through the NDF. Oh, they co covered labor, the universities, academy, farmers, fishermen, women, teachers, all over. They infiltrated even the church. And we, uh, we did not only have the armed elements of the Communist Party and the separatists, we have the Christian Liberation Army. Even I'm, the church was involved. So in, in, in that time, the government assessed that it was the largest security problem was the communist uh, insurgency. Correct. And that yeah. is that the, the, the martial law was really a response to that correct, very... Correct. One of the reasons why President Marcos finally declared martial law, uh, very few people will remember this now, was because there, there was already a working coalition between the Liberal Party and the New People's Army, the New, new Communist Party of the Philippines said that by season at this point. And President Marcos real, realized that the that country was too fragile with a very limited military capability to contain the problem. But this is something new. Did, we, I did not know there was a formal agreement or yeah. a, between a political my, oh my party. God. Nino and Aquino and I met in the house of Ramon Silay in Urdaneta village. He was my neighbor. Uh, Paul Aquino, is he still alive? Mm -hmm. He was present in that meeting. He was the one who reported to me that uh, he had a meeting with the leadership of the Communist Party and they were uh, discussing a coalition government. But this was together with the, with the Liberal Party at the time? He was a member of the Liberal Party. But the Liberal Party hierarchy was, uh, was part of this, uh, this arrangement? Or? When President Marcos uh, finally confronted them with information, they refused to talk to President Marcos. I didn't proclaim martial law alone. Uh, it is made to appear as if uh, I, I just uh, signed the decree and said, I impose martial law on each and every one of you. No. I ask the legislature to please pass a law proclaiming martial law because there was anarchy in the country. Now, uh, let me uh, say this. The opposition was strong. And... Uh, they were members of the Security Council and somehow they had adopted the resolution which uh, required that there be a unanimous vote for the armed forces to be able to move. 
and therefore the armed forces was immobilized. At the same time, I asked uh, um, the um, opposition party to come and join me in a coalition government. I offered one half of the cabinet. And of course, they laughed at me and said, why should we join you? We're going to take over the government. By the time you are through with the exercise, you're dead. How was, the, how was the evolution of the thinking within the administration to finally come to the decision that uh, my father declared martial law? In because uh, it started when uh, they invented the Jabida massacre. <laughs> invented I say invented it because until now uh, I've not heard of anyone who complained about anybody being massacred in Corridor. No one. The only one who was uh, who appeared as a member of the trainees, supposedly the Muslim trainees in Corregidor, was that fellow who swam, swam across the Corregidor to uh, Cavite, which was the invention of Montano and uh, Nino Yakino. Uh, that is, but and because of that uh, outburst, political outburst of Nino, we lost Saba. Saba. Uh, and then. That Jabita massacre, uh, the, the real, uh, what do you call this, effect injured the political stature of the Marcos regime, mm. followed by the Plaza Miranda grenading in 1971. Mm. And because of that Plaza Miranda, I was a victim. I was a candidate afterwards for uh, senator and I lost because we were blamed for Plaza Miranda, although that was the handiwork of the Communist Party. The disorder that was brought about by them, by the left especially, was uh, too much to bear by, this, by the country at that point. As the Secretary of Defense had to fight both the Muslims in Mindanao and the Christians. Yes, and then at the same time, there were also datos who, were, who rose against the government. The group of the MNLF were sponsored by Malaysia. Because of the limitations uh, imposed by the government, the regime, or the situation, political situation in the country before martial law, the hands of the president was limited, so he finally decided in the, after he was re-elected to impose martial law. He asked me to study his powers under the commander-in-chief provision. I was secretary of justice at the time. The declaration and the implementation in the very first days, I was not here, I was uh, abroad studying. And I remember that uh, I, was, I just got the news uh, from a phone call. My father had mentioned it previously and he said that things are getting pretty bad. And uh, he had spoken about uh, the suspension of the writ of habeas corpus. And after that, uh, he was talking about uh, that uh, we hope, he had hoped not to declare martial law. But I... He you got, know, actually, I got the news that your the dad asked me to prepare this study in December of 1969 mm -hmm. because he was anticipating that he will uh, finally have to face mm -hmm. the music. When we finished the studies about January of 1970, uh, uh, at this point, the president transferred me to the Department of National Defense. Ah. And then he waited from 1970-71. He allowed the election of 1971 to go through, where we were, the nation was experiencing violence mm -hmm. and uh, disorder. Because he, he, as he did not want to declare it. He was hesitating mm -hmm. to, to use his uh, commander-in-chief powers. Until finally, in 1972, he decided. My uh, countrymen, as of the 21st of uh, this month, I signed Proclamation Number 1081, placing the entire Philippines under martial law. So the, it is. It's not uh, remembered very well, or it is not uh, well uh, documented, or it is not well. Uh, disseminated about the, how, how large and how severe the problem was uh, of the communist uprising and the uh, well we, we still see the fighting in Mindanao but it's over a different uh, 
uh, different we ideology. Were, we now. were able to arrest all of the leaders, mm. including uh, uh, Jose Maria Sison, Georgette, uh, the wife, and several of the leading commanders of uh, the Communist Party and emasculated the organization. Until later on, when uh, we had, uh, after ENSA, Corey restored the problem because he, he released she all released the leaders all of, of the Communist leaders. Party and then including Father Balweg mm -mm. of the Cordillera Ras mm -mm. and then brought back Miswari from, uh, from exile yes. to revive the MNL problem. Mm. Oh. And, and was there uh, a reason stated that for is why, where why, why I they parted did ways with, <laughs> <laughs> with Corey? Oh. In the face of all of this, I think we, moved, we come to the question, what, how did you think Cory did as president? Did you think she... she, she, well, she, she that, wala kami know, dito, so hindi namin alam uh, masyado yung mga detalye. You know, Wang Bong, having been uh, involved in the cabinet of uh, President Marcos, and I'm not saying this to denigrate anybody, I was uh, dismayed when in my first uh, cabinet meeting with uh, Cory. He did not make any decision. I'm sorry to say this, but I realized I, in that first meeting that I had in that cabinet, that the president that succeeded Jordan did not know anything about governance. You know, the people are amorphous, and they're uh, open to uh, propaganda. <laughs> and these uh, people are expected. <laughs> you, you believe that propaganda was a very large uh, aspect of the uh, Yellow Movement? They have always been like that. Even during the, the time of your father, uh, we were... Uh, they, could, uh, they, they have people in, the, in, in all the media outlets. In your view, does the, does the role, has the role of the media increased or decreased over the years? It will increase, especially with the speed of communication now. Well, we have the cell phone, mm -hmm. uh, the social media. You can read your the news in, uh, in, uh, on your telephone. <laughs> in your cell phone, and you can, uh, you can also text your opinion. They, they can ma ma manipulate public opinion. Even uh, the, the surveys will be will be suspect at that point. Well, the surveys have already become a little bit... Uh, <laughs> are, are, are taken with a, a grain of salt already. Correct, correct. So I guess that is, a, that is a distinct possibility. So despite the fact that uh, all of these things, the, 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 the performances of the, the, those who ally themselves with the Yellow Group have been dominant, do you feel that that dominance will still uh, the last for the last 30 years? Do you think no, that dominance I will don't continue? Think... I, don't know, I do not know whether they are dominant. But, well, not now, but you know, they have been. You know, if they have a Smartmatic. Bong <laughs> <laughs> Bong, when uh, I was in that government, I knew that uh, I was there only temporarily because uh, from the very start, I was actually like a pariah. <laughs> in the cabinet of Cory. <laughs> yes, because he, you were considered the implementer, the main implementer of martial law. <laughs> and I think uh, the, uh, some of the orders that were, that were signed by you and, not, uh, and by, the, by then, the, by then uh, President Marcos, uh, so kayo talaga ang sinisisi doon sa martial law. hindi lang yun eh. One month after... Your, did you, after, did you, after your father departed, I thought he will reopen the Batas and Pombalsa. Mm. No, he did not reopen. What he, she did was she, to consolidate yeah. power unto herself by writing her own revolutionary constitution and assume the powers, the executive power and the legislative power. The only thing she left was judicial power.
In the face of all of this, I think we, move, we come to the question, what, how did you think Cory did as president? Did you think she... she, well, she, she, she but, wala but kami I dito, so hindi namin that, alam masyado yung mga detalye. You know, Wang Bong, having been uh, involved in the cabinet of uh, President Marcos, and I'm not saying this to denigrate anybody, I was uh, dismayed when in my first uh, cabinet meeting with uh, Cory, he did not make any decision. He will say, oh, Tito, Gingona, Tito, ikaw naman, magsalita. Mon, ikaw, magsalita. Oh, Adoy. Ganun. Well, no decision. And I realized, finally, personally, I, I'm sorry to say this, but I realized I, in that first meeting that I had in that cabinet, that the president, that Succeeded Jordan, did not know anything about governance. Mm. And it, uh, it, it showed afterwards. Well, it wasn't... It was, uh, the, the, the ones governing the country were, was not Cory. Other people who were around there. Oh. Well, it, it, it's not surprising because if, if you look at her record, she has no experience or even inclination as far as I could tell for government work or public service yeah. at uh, Siguro. Well, I do not know whether it is true that uh, she was uh, f very fond of playing Mahjong. And that's <laughs> why. <laughs> well, since we, we've come to the subject of Cory Aquino, and uh, I guess that brings us to, to Ed Sam. We've had more than one, we number them. Uh, Ed Sam 1 and Ed Sam 2. But this popular uprising has become already a part of the political narrative or the political, uh, the, the, the political methods uh, of uh, unseating a government or bringing a government down. In your view, is that a good development? Should it be part of the narrative? Should we well, choose our you, leaders you this way? You cannot uh, avoid, prevent people from uh, marching in the streets to hmm. peaceably assemble for redress of grievances. That's constitutional. But in the case of the first EDSA, the question is why EDSA? Mm. Who decided that the event must be in EDSA? Mm. Corey did not decide that. Mm. None of the Liberal Party people decide, decided that. They were all gone. They were in Cebu. While the drama in Manila was unfolding, Aquino was in the southern city of Cebu, continuing a post-election campaign advocating civil disobedience. It was there because we went to the Camp Aguinaldo, yes, right. and that is where the confrontation took place. Now, as far as our, uh, our, we were concerned in the RAM, we never planned to involve the people. It was plainly... A, a purely uh, a military, military action. action, but with one condition that we will not harm the mm -hmm. president and his family. Mm -hmm. It just happened that it burst that day mm -hmm. because of things that I do not want to discuss now, no? mm -hmm. involving a group of generals who had okay. also a political plan I do not know whether your father, I'm sure he, your father did not know, or your mother. But they had a political plan to, to, for uh, the country. To and establish an alternative and government? From my point of view, I had to do something about it but at that point in our history, because I was involved with the military. I was the head of the, the, the Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. I did not involve the generals of the uh, military because they were involved. Mm. And so... I had to work with young people in the military who were idealistic enough to agree to protect the interest of the country and the Filipino people without involving the people themselves. You see? But God was with us because that event turned without any blood turned out to be bloodless. No? Yes. Oh. Because, uh, I, I... because your father restrained himself. I understand you gave them orders to wait. And I told them to wait because... There are massing civilians near our troops. And we cannot keep on withdrawing. They asked us to withdraw yesterday. When I talked to Mr. Enrile, he said, you talk to you, we will do it. My order is to disperse the crowd. We cannot withdraw all the time, Mr. President. Without must... shooting them. No, 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 hold on. You disperse the crowd without shooting them. 
I remember we, we, uh, we, many of his advisors at the time in the palace, while we were observing what was happening in the camps with you and the General yeah. Ramos, uh, many were advising him to, to Yeah, I to read the book attack. of uh, Art Arvizar, oh, no? but, uh, and I saw the, the restraint of the president as uh, gleaned from that book. And uh, I saw also the folly of uh, our plan to assault the palace if we, if we assaulted it. Hmm. We could have been massacred I'm, because at that point you were prepared already. We were very well prepared. <laughs> I, mean, I think it's the first time we are able to talk we, about it. We would have been massacred uh, there. You know. in fact, in fact, but that, uh, yeah, I think there was a guiding hand hmm. that uh, more or less controlled that event. By the way, I did not know that your dad was sick, huh? Mm. If you remember, I, I, went to the, I went to the palace. I do not know whether you, you heard about this. July of 1985, I was resigning. Why were you resigning? Because uh, some people reported to the president that uh, my, my men in the Department of Defense were uh, scaling buildings at night. It was true that we did, but uh, that was in connection with his instruction to me to organize an anti-terrorist group uh, unit in the Department of Defense. So on that basis, you, were, you thought that you did not, uh, you no, no longer... No, they, they, they were saying that uh, you were planning something, although to be truthful, at that point we were organizing because I received an information that uh, there was a military junta and that I was supposed to be executed by that junta if but something happens to why, your president. Why, why, I did not know that your president, that the president was sick at that time. Why was you? Why were you on the kill list of that junta? Why would you? Why probably are you the declared? The, probably the declared because I was enemy. a hindrance to their, to their political uh, uh, objective. So, under, so un, un, unbeknownst to many or most people. There was a plan for a military takeover already? Correct. And the junta was already organized? Yeah. Can you tell us who the members of the junta were? <laughs> well, maybe for you a little... You will be surprised. The chief of his staff. Mm. The general of the... The head of the Philippine army. The army. The head of the Philippine Air Force. The head of the Philippine Navy. The head of the Philippine Coast Guard. Those were the members of the junta. How were they? How were they going to take over the reins of power? The, according to the information I received, if your father died, mm. they were not supposed to announce it at all. They will keep it away from the knowledge of the public. They will invite all the members of the cabinet, in the name of your father, for a cabinet meeting. And once we are in the in the palace, we will be quarantined. Mm -hmm. But in my case, I will have to be executed. <laughs> this is something that, uh, again, uh, I don't <laughs> think, uh, I, I, this may, maybe this is the first time that this information has seen the light of day. Well. So the, the uprising of uh, what became EDSA was not a break with, the, with my father. It was an opposition to this junta. Correct. But it just happened that on the day we... We, we, we went to Aguinaldo. We were already uh, going to be arrested by uh, the presidential guards. <laughs> well, because they... Because of the information that you got, mm -hmm. uh, that the palace got. And naturally, we had no other way except to defend ourselves. I uh, think it, it, it reached a fever, fever pitch when the, you, you were barricading because uh, I remember those helicopters, those very famous photographs oh. of the helicopters landing on the roof and uh, unloading firearms and uh, military equipment. And they uh, were barricaded. Na sila. That was the na. helicopter of... Nang, nang army. Uh, no, that, mga was, Huey. that was the, uh, the, the helicopter of, uh, assigned to the Secretary of National Defense. I'm in the UN. <laughs> I see. You <laughs> nga. That was but, the helicopter I was using. But they brought, they, they came and yeah. the photographs were, 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 were Correct. published Correct. of uh, them unloading firearms, Correct. unloading military Correct. equipment, communications equipment. And the assessment of, in the palace at the time was that the, this is the beginning of a coup d'etat. But we had information beforehand 
that there was going to be an attack on the palace. Correct. If I received the information. But we, we, there was no plan to harm the president. That is what the that is what the Greg Honasan also told me when we <laughs> when we talked about this uh, long after long that, after that the was, actual that events. That was our common agreement. And Minister Inrela commandeering the complex housing, the Ministry of Defense. Well, Tito, you know I have been all this time since 1986. I have been wanting to ask you a question, oh. and I have never found the opportunity oh. to do it. And it, I think this is a good time. Yeah. After all that happened in EDSA, after all of the, this uprising, etc., nandun na kami, dinal na kami sa, sa, sa Guam and then eventually to Hawaii, bakit hindi kayo ang nagpresidente? You knew the characters Alam that were mo. involved and you were much more qualified you know, than any of them. Your dad was giving me the government in the morning of Tuesday, February 25. I remember, Tito, I was, I was there when he made the phone call to you. Correct. He was stopping, he was asking me to ask for it to postpone her or taking. Mm. But I, I told him I would try. You know, Bong Bong, I did not intend to take over power in the first place. But while I was inside Camp Aguinaldo, uh, Camp Krame, I was thinking about what will happen. And uh, I said, if, I, we, if the military will take over, I will involve the country into a possible civil war. Because the election was just finished. There is a big block of votes that voted for Corey. There was a big block of votes voted, that voted for your father. And I was not exposed to the election, electoral mm. process at that point. Mm. I'm sure that if I did, if the military took over and I assumed power, I will have enemies inside my military organization also. Then I will, there is a possibility that the two forces that uh, fought in that election will combine. Will combine. To was it likely? That, 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 it's that, possible. That, I suppose yung, yung tropa namin and those who were opposed to you within uh, the MND uh, yeah. central... And then the, you have the bulk of the military at that mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. who, did, who did not know where, to, where they will situate themselves. Mm -hmm. All of that I thought about it. By the way, Monday night, I called for Jimmy Ong Ping to come to Camp Krame. And I said, uh, this event that uh, is happening now will be a protracted event. Let us organize a provisional government to handle the running of our revolutionary government. They said they proposed five cabinet positions, just defense, finance, local government, justice, and foreign affairs. Sa inyo yung apat, kako, the position. Sa amin, yung defense. Because I wanted to uh, to balance their, for, uh, their uh, kind, political forces against the military forces. Alam mong ginawa nila that night? That is where I started to suspect them. They filled all the positions in the cabinet. They organized their own cabinet. But you had an agreement uh, yeah. previous to that? Well, I had an agreement with Jimmy Ong Ping. Hmm. I hindi po na mga totoo na tao na itong kausap ko. Yes, it's always been a mystery to me because you were positioned perfectly to take over the reins of power. <laughs> and uh, we, we were all a little surprised watching this again from, uh, from far away. And we were saying, for sure, I'm sure, uh, si Minister... I was afraid, I was afraid not, for, uh, not for, uh, for myself but for the country that it will cause a bloodbath. I think you were you were similar in thinking to my father because the one of the reasons and I, I we asked I asked him this directly is that why were you so hesitant to use force in 1986? Uh, nung talagang na yung palasyo, uh, binobomba na tayo, pinapuput, binabaril na tayo. Ganun. Why were you not? Maramin naman kami tropa. We were very well prepared because as I said, we received the information of an imminent attack to the on the palace one week before uh, you and General Ramos went to Krame and uh, made your stand in Krame. 
So we, were, we, we had the chance to prepare. So we were wondering, why, were we not, why did we not fight back mm. with, with, with force? And he said that would have been the beginning of a civil war, yeah. which I think is exactly the, 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 then, the way uh, you saw it. And that afternoon of uh, when, when you left the palace, I do not know whether you were with uh, the president. I was. When you call, he called me, first he asked me, do you have any troops around the palace? I said, Mr. President, we do not have any mm -mm. troops in, uh, around the palace. He said, and, uh, but we are, there are people firing at us. Well, those are not our people. Can you send someone to help us to stop those firings? And so I said, I will send General Lee was there. Then I mentioned to him, that I have just talk, uh, spoken to uh, Ambassador Bosworth. Bosworth at the time. At the time. And then he stopped for a while. And then he said, can you call him back and ask him to make available to me the services of General Allen, mm. Teddy Allen, so that we can leave Malacanang. Mm. I called up Bosworth after our conversation. I called up Bosworth and I told him about the request of the president. After uh, a while, Bosworth called me up and he said, Can you ask General Ramos to coordinate with Teddy Allen mm. to help in the departure of the president from Malacanang? And that's what I did. I, I remember very well that it was General Allen. We, we remember we were waiting for the uh, American helicopters yeah. because our the presidential helicopters was also in uh, Malacanang Park, yeah. but they had already been strafed. So me, me tamana, so they weren't. But then the proposal was that they would send helicopters from Clark. They sent two big helicopters from Clark, and uh, I remember when we crossed Pasig River, uh, the. The officer who met us was General Allen. After I, I talked to the president, I, I wrote to Wak Wak, to the uh, house of Josephine Kuhanko, mm -hmm. the sister of Cory, mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's where she was. Mm -hmm. Cory was there. And then when I arrived, uh, his whole cabinet, the people, who became her cabinet officials were there, and Doña Aurora. Mm -hmm. And then I reported to Cory about my conversation with your dad, as well as my conversation with Bosworth, and that the president, uh, your dad, was departing Malacanang. And then Cory did not know anything about that event. Mm -hmm. She called Bosworth. And then I remember uh, Corey saying, shouted over the phone, no, I do not want him here. Yes. Let's take him out. That's it. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. That was in the middle of the night already. We were already in Clark. Yeah. The Americans were still, uh, were, did not know quite what to do with us. The ori original arrangement is that we will be flown because, to, uh, to Ilocos. Corey requested that from Bosworth mm -mm. when I made the report to Corey. And... Uh, because of the interregnum, uh, the gulu at that point, mm -hmm. probably the transmission of uh, the information to the operating units of the, uh, the American, American military. military was delayed. Well, we were, we were awoken, we, we hadn't slept, but it was in the middle of the night. Um, I remember General Allen asked to, to see my father, and I said that he's resting and he's not uh, in the best of health. And what is it about? And he sat us down and he said that um, 
we were surrounded by NPA forces <laughs> and that there were two uh, columns of NPA uh, units there coming. Were, there were no NPA. Well, that was already, <coughs> they, they misinterpreted the Poway to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was what was eventually became the joke. Uh, on that basis, they said, we have to fly you out immediately. And instead of going to Pauai, and the excuse that was given was that we cannot fly to Pauai because Pauai does not have lights to <laughs> land in the middle of the night. And because, you know, I knew that your dad had uh, an intention of going up, up north. Mm -mm. Because in the morning of Tuesday, he asked, if I go north, do you think I'll be protected? Mm -mm. Of course, I told him. And if I get out of the country, can I come back? And of course, Mr. President, you are a president of the country. You are free to come back to the country. Those were my answers to him. Oh. So it was very much a decision at that time. Ayoko jan, but stay, get out, of, get him out of the country was yeah. then Cory's, uh, Cory's uh, decision. Wait, <laughs> she said, "Sabi ni na nakinig sila kay Cory yung mga Amerikano because sabi niya peremptory yung kanya sabi." Mm. No, I do not want him here. I take him out of the country. Well, I, 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 that, that, seems to, that seems to be the same report that we got. And uh, actually, eventually, the Americans told us that we were actually said the instruction was that uh, not, not to be brought anymore to Ilocos, but to be, to be taken out of the country. So, so, Tito, let's take this, all of this now. With this as the foundation of all of the, histor as a historical background, the, context. The history uh, was totally distorted to favor one group. And it's, it, it is unfortunately continuing. That is why exercises yeah. such as these are and, important. Uh, little by little, the truth will come out. Well, I, 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 I'm glad that uh, you have asked me to join this uh, conversation so that uh, at least we can somehow correct the distortions of history. I am very grateful to you. And I'm willing to challenge to anybody uh, here in this country to debate with me about the events. Well, Tito, your, your, your knowledge and your perspective is based on actual experience and actual facts. I think that is the difference between you I did not and those that have been challenging you. I have not lied to the people. <laughs> huh? I have not manipulated the events. I dealt with them as I faced them. Well, Tito, on that note, thank I think you. Uh, I know it is for me to thank you for allowing us uh, a view into the... Uh, Anytime, into any place, <laughs> I'm always at your service. Just thank you very, very much. <laughs>